better to have a short life that is full of what you like doing than a long life spent in a miserable way. I'm on route back to Canada. Did I say route like an American or a Canadian? I know there's a big debate on it. And as a Canadian, I'm not sure if I just did my country proud or did them dirty. Proud, rude. I think it's route. Hello friends, welcome to New Work. Last time I commuted halfway through, I ended up in Washington. I am exploring all the routes to Canada. So I've had a lot of questions about commuting from flight attendants or aspiring flight attendants about commuting. So while I'm on this commute, I wanted to share my most valuable tips. Before I get started, if you're new here, I'm Carissa. I'm a commuting Canadian flight attendant, a CCFA, if you will. Give this video a like and a subscribe because it helps my little channel take flight and reach new heights. See what I did there? All right, so tips for commuting. First things first, if you're commuting, you need to have a generous space of time between your first day of work and the time it takes to get there. If you live only one short flight away, it might be totally doable for you to fly to your base a few hours before your shift. If it's a significant distance or there's only one or two flights a day to your base, you probably wanna go the night before. You never know if your plane will be downsized, delayed, there'll be a mechanical or cancellations. Almost all of my commutes have had significant delays where I would have missed my connections that follow after that. So I allow one to two days buffer. But in my case, commuting is more complicated at least right now. So my airline is not flying to Aruba currently, which is where I live. I have to take two American carriers for two flights, and then I can usually fly standby on the last flight on my own airline. The whole trip takes me two days. And normally it's just two quick Canadian connecting flights, just one really long day, but they're not flying right now, so what are you gonna do? Because of partnerships we have with other airlines, I can actually choose to fly standby for a cheaper ticket. However, I have chosen to pay full prices for my ticket right now because when I have things that go wrong, I don't wanna get stuck in the Americas, struggling on my phone, trying to book another standby ticket, which I may or may not get, sleeping in airports and eating Aunt Annie's pretzels, which I tried for the first time yesterday and I really don't wanna do that again. When you're a paying customer, at least the airline takes care of you. Honestly, the price difference in this case isn't that significant. It's about $100, so it's really not worth the hassle to fly standby. For instance, yesterday my first flight was delayed by three hours, which caused me to miss my connection. So as a paying customer, they promised me a hotel room and rerouted me on a different flight. And this time, this time they actually gave me a hotel room. I'll put a card up here of my last commuting adventure where they did not, but that's another story. This hotel may smell like weed, have old elevators with buttons that don't work, and I may or may not have slept with my clothes on. That's kind of the vibe this hotel gave off, but at least it wasn't the airport floor. However, I did not realize there was a dress code Almost all the guests here have tattoos and a very distinct clothing style. And I just feel like I wasn't prepared to fit in. Not that I wanted to. If this happens again and this airline offers me a free hotel, I'm probably not going to take it. I think I'm just gonna go somewhere else and spend my own money because um, this hotel room actually looks okay. Just, it's if you look close, Pretty sure the sheets were dirty. I diverted from the original point wildly. Point was, you never know if your flight will be delayed or you literally have to spend the night somewhere you weren't expecting. So that's the first thing. Allow a generous buffer of time to get to home base. Second thing to consider is the pros and the cons of commuting, especially financially, because here's the thing. The way I'm doing things right now is probably not the most financially smart. I recommend having a commute where you only have one, maybe two flights. For me right now, this is ridiculous. It takes me two days to get back to Canada plus a hotel. So the cost of all this can add up. When you're at your home base, you also have to have a place to stay. Right now, I'm also starting to look for a new crash pad as my current one is becoming unavailable. So it's a bit of a chuckle. It's totally doable, 
but it is a lot. So if you're considering commuting, you have to see if all the pieces of your puzzle fit together and make sense to you. How many flights will it take? How much will they cost? Are there friends that you can crash with or family? Are there fellow flight attendants who will split the rent with you for a crash pad? Is there an old ex that you can crash with? I'm kidding. Don't do that. That's a very stupid idea. After weighing all the pros and cons, if you decide commuter makes sense to you, the biggest secret is how you bid for your schedule. I'm just realizing I'm running out of time. I gotta get to the airport for my second flight. So I'm actually gonna share this later with you in the video, the way that I bid as a commuter because I think it'll be helpful for aspiring commuters. So I will see you later and I am going to leave this hotel as soon as possible. Oh well, look, a coffee maker with no coffee maker and no coffee or tea. I don't know, it's a very strange hotel. Messy bun check. All right, where do I go? Oh, the button worked this time. I feel like people need to read this sign. done one more to go I have put myself on standby for the next flight which is at 3 30 because my one that I am booked on originally is at 7 30 and I don't want to wait that long because I just want ramen from Vancouver I just I need ramen earlier than later so we're doing our best to get there ASAP back at my crash pad in Vancouver and I could not have come back to the city at a more perfect time. The streets are filled with the scent of cherry blossoms and they are so beautiful. I just can't get over how gorgeous this city is at this time of year. So it was funny on my way here, I was on an American carrier and a flight attendant came up to me and she's like, are you the flight attendant that commutes from here to there? I think I recognize you from my flights. I guess now I'm at the point where I'm doing this route often enough that we're starting to recognize each other. I think that's been the perk of this long commute process is all these amazing American flight attendants that I normally wouldn't have been able to have met and getting to chat with them a little bit. We're all just one big sky family. My voice is leaving me. I don't know why. I think I'm just a little tired from my commute, but thankfully I have today and tomorrow to just reset. I've been unpacking and then repacking for my flights, juicing celery for the next few days and cleaning. So it's been so nice just to have a couple days to reset before jumping right back into work. So I wanted to touch back on tips for bidding as a commuter because I know that it can feel a little overwhelming and complicated. I actually talked to an expert on bidding on the phone for a few times just till I got the hang of the process. So I definitely recommend if you have that resource available as a flight attendant that you take it. I originally asked for a reduced block for this month, which means working half the hours and I did not get it. But then when I put in my regular bid, I asked for uh, minimum hours. I waived one in seven days off and then I waived something else and I actually got what I wanted. So I'm going to show you what my schedule is like on this very outdated calendar from like three years ago but my friend was a photographer for this hedgehog look at it it's so cute so i haven't been able to throw it out yet anyway so i highlighted obviously the dates don't line up because this calendar is outdated but i highlighted my schedule for this next month these three days here that are circled are my only official days off so as you can see it is very much a go 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 kind of schedule i think i have three four day pairings and then one two-day pairing it's definitely going to be very busy and long hours but that's exactly what i wanted because when you're commuting you don't want to be like working here and then here and then here and having like three days off in between and it just doesn't work well then you're not commuting you're basically living at your crash pad 100 percent of the time so why not live there what's the point in commuting i have it bid so that the last half of the month is off i'm done and then the real secret is when you're bidding for the next month, 
oh that's June so for May I'm going to be asking to work these days the last half of the month then theoretically 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 then I'm gonna have this first half of the month and the previous month last half of the month off so this means I basically have almost a month off and you just do this every time you bid this is what works for me. If you are a commuter as a flight attendant or a commuter for any job, I guess, please drop your tips below in the comments. Commuting is definitely an art form. I'm still learning. This is what is working for me. It is the most efficient thing I can think of at this time. I realize this video is more geared towards flight attendants who want to commute and are looking for tips, but I hope this was still interesting to you. If not, don't worry. I have some vlogs coming up soon and thank you so much for watching. I I think I'm going to end this video here because I want to go for a walk and look at all the cherry blossoms. So thank you for watching. I appreciate you so much. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Say hi. I would love that. And I will see you next time.